Hello everyone. Thank you for coming up today. My old subscribers, thank you. And to those that are viewing for the first time or that have not subscribed, please click on the subscribe button and the notification bell so you get notified each time we upload a new video. And to my new subscribers, thank you for subscribing. Please do not forget to hit on the like button. A man claims that his wife beats him mercilessly every day. The Bielsa State Police Command has arrested a 56 years old man who goes by the name Christopher. And he just killed his wife during a fight over money in the community in Ogiba, local government area of Bielsa State in Nigeria. And it was gathered that the suspect struck his 41 years old wife with a pistol during a fight after she had now passed away in the hospital. He also tried to commit suicide by taking sniper. However, neighbors were able to resuscitate him and they handed him over to the police so he didn't pass away after taking that particular sniper. And right now, He's being paraded at the police headquarters today, March 9th. Christopher claims that he killed his wife in self-defense. And according to Christopher, what he's saying now is that he's been married to his wife for 30 years and they have five children together, but they have been fighting frequently because she cheats on him out of the money they jointly generated from their farming business. And he was actually interviewed and the police needed to hear exactly what transpired and how come he ended up killing his wife that he claimed is always beating him up. These are his words. Whenever I take our produce to the market, she does not give me an account of the sales. For two years, she refused to give me an account of the money we have realized from the farm. So one day I called her to give me an account and when she refused, we started fighting until neighbors separated us. In anger, the next day, I asked her to leave the farm business for me to handle alone. One day when I returned from the farm, she had packed my things out of the house. That day we fought again and neighbors separated and settled us. Fed up with the whole development, I asked her to pack out of the house the following day, but she refused. Then we started fighting. At that point, she is stronger than me, so each time we fight, she would beat me mercilessly. So this time, as she was beating me, out of anger, I struck her with a pistol. It was at that point she collapsed. Neighbors helped to rush her to the hospital of Port Harcourt Teaching Hospital where she later died. When I heard she had died, I took sniper in an attempt to kill myself, but neighbors were quick to come to my rescue and took me to the hospital. And that's why I survived that particular suicide attempt I almost did. And these are the words of Mr. Christopher, the husband to the late woman who has just died today. And it's has come to the notice that most people that suffer domestic violence are the women, not the men. But this seemed to be like a different case. Some men, though, suffer domestic violence. Some of them could be abusive domestic violence, could be verbal domestic violence. But in the cases of women, it's usually the violence where the man end up beating her. Some even beat the woman to death. But Christopher is explaining his own part of the story and claiming that his wife doesn't give him account of whatever farm produce sales they have made. 
And since she continued doing that for the past two years, he now decided, okay, that she should leave the farm business alone for him to handle. To him, he felt like he was just laboring in vain. He would walk and walk. And then at the end of the day, the wife would just siphon this money to herself. He also claimed that she was cheating on him. And each time they got into a fight that she was always overpowering him because she appeared to be stronger than him but this time around he decided that he wouldn't let her overpower him again but unknown to him that out of that anger what he did would lead to death and so he had to carry out the act by taking the pistol to hit her on the head and that was how she finally collapsed and deep down him, he felt so bad that his wife had finally died. He never had the intentions of killing her. That's what he's trying to explain here. But it was out of anger. He decided to see how he can try to overpower his wife for once. Each time they always had a quarrel, she was always the one beating him up. But it ended up in a very, very sad way. This wasn't a good action for him to take. Neither this decision to use a pistol pistols are very hard that's what they use in pounding using them pounding yam pounding a lot of things and even very difficult things use it to pound even palm kernel use it to pound a lot of things and it is cooking so you can imagine that you use that kind of a pistol to hit someone on the head or even on the back you don't expect that person to survive especially when you use a very strong fist or all your energy you exhaust it on that pistol and then it's transferred to the human being no human being survive it only takes the grace of god for any human being to survive a pistol that has been hit very hard on you on your head or even on your back it's really sad you know and again owing to the fact that he kept telling her pack out of the house pack out of the house and all that's not the right way to resolve issues in a situation like this, since they even have neighbors that are aware that they are always in conflict, fighting each other and ending up beating themselves, they would have still called these neighbors to settle their issue or whatever was really going on. The husband would have informed or notified the neighbors, let them intervene since they are already in the picture of what's happening. Or he would have even called family members because if a woman is cheating on you, and you have a joint business and she's not giving you account so it's just a thing of loss on the path of the man and which no family would encourage their daughter to cheat on their husbands or even to hoard money to herself rather than bringing it out for the family use if only he had consulted their family both families I'm sure something good would have come out of it in the sense that they would have been able to try to resolve whatever conflict that was going on between Christopher and his wife. But unfortunately, he decided to take the laws into his hands, even though he claimed that he never had intentions of killing her out of the anger or frustration of what he's been going through from his wife he decided that let him give her a little bit of lesson but teaching her that lesson ended up in a very tragic and disappointing way at the moment he's been arrested and he's in police custody today because of this horrible act that has happened and it goes to every other person out there like I said earlier, it's rare to see men go through domestic violence. Some men are going through it, but it's not as pronounced as women that go through domestic violence. So you can imagine that this man is saying his wife is really overpowering him and she beats him up mercilessly. For that reason, he would have made a report. Because these domestic violence workers, those hotlines that you can call, they are not just there for only women, but for men. Anyone going through the domestic violence in their home, you're free to give them a call and they will answer you. All right, if he can't communicate or if he doesn't want to call over the phone, he would have sought for help. Either talk to the neighbors that were always coming to their rescue or he would have gone to his church leader or religious leader, whatever he was practicing, the religion he was practicing, he would have gone to meet their leaders because... I'm sure no religious leader would encourage you to 
keep having conflict in your home. They will try to see how they can resolve it. He would have tried that particular approach too. Rather than just staying there and saying, okay, his wife is always beating him up and overpowering him. And the slightest opportunity he had, he just used it wrongly. That is where anger comes into play. Out of the anger and the things that has been going on, he piled it up in his heart and he decided to execute it in one day. And in just one day, within minutes of that fight, that was how this woman lost her life. Please, women out there, for those of you that are into acts like this, where you don't even have any regards or respect for your husband because some women are like that the way they would even talk to the husbands you won't even know if that's really their husband or a helpmate there is something that was said in the bible that it's better a man said it's better he lives at the corner of a roof Stay in that corner than to be living in a house with a nagging wife. Because I know some men will complain that their wives are nagging. And you know when you're in an environment like that, the home won't be convenient or suitable for you to be there. Some men will decide that they will stay out late until they know that the wife is asleep. Then they will come into the house all in the bed to avoid hearing her nag. It can be very uncomfortable where you are in that kind of a relationship or marriage. Some women want to be in control. They don't want to listen to their husbands. They just want to ensure that they take the final decision, which the reverse is meant to be the case. Men are in charge of the home and decision making should be a two way thing. You guys can both come together and agree. It doesn't mean that one person's decision should overshadow the other person. No. You can come together as a couple and lay the questions on the table and put one or two together for you guys to arrive at an agreement because definitely two people's opinions can't count at the same time. So it's better both of you combine your opinions and see how it will work out together rather than you making the home uncomfortable for your husband. Some men have decided to stay out late not even come back till the next day in the morning when they know that their wives have gone to work. Then they come in, rest a while and rush back to work. So men from work, they go somewhere else to go and feel that that's where they want to relax and ease off the tension from the house. Some women are aware of this but they just neglect the fact that their husbands don't find comfort being around them. If you are in a sh position like this, you should be worried if your husband avoids you. Especially, you know yourself, if you're a nagging woman, you want to be in charge, you want to be in control, you always want to take the decision, you want to toss the man around. No man will be comfortable in that kind of an environment or marriage. You will just end up losing your husband. And some women will do this to the point that the man will decide that he is leaving the house for them. Then that is when they will not realize what they have been doing. Some don't even realize it at that time. Some are not remorseful. They are not repentant. They just let the man go if he wants to go. Until he is gone, they will now start feeling regrets and wishing that they never took such drastic decisions. Please, women that are into domestic violence, beating your husband. Some of you don't beat your husband, but the things you pour out of your mouth. Oh, no. It's better that the man never came back home at all than him coming back home and hearing you saying all manner of things to him. You know those things, words. Sometimes they said words can even kill you faster than picking a knife to stab you. They're saying things you voice out of your mouth and throw at your husband or a a human being like you, the person will wish he was even dead and sitting and hearing you say these things. So women have lost their control, even with their mouth especially. You know, that's why some men run away. Some men, it's not because their wife will beat them up, but just because of the things she would voice out of her mouth, the way she would nag, the insulting words she would use or how she would describe him, the man will feel it is better, he is even in a far land forest than being with this kind of a woman. Women should always know that they are helpmates. 
You know, help me doesn't mean that you are the nanny of the house. No, you have to support your husband. That's why you are a helpmate. The support, you are an anchor for your husband. And when you now make your husband feel very useless, he feels like he's not useful to you in the house. He feels like a maid or a slave rather than your best friend and your best partner. At that point, you won't expect any man to still want to live in that kind of an environment. So women come home and they see that their husband have moved out of the house. It has happened to some women. They use their words, their mouth to chase their husbands away and unknown to them that they are chasing their husbands away. Some of them will maltreat their husbands in this manner. Some would never want to cook for him. Some would do a whole lot of terrible things. Some would even walk down to his place of work and openly or publicly embarrass him there. This act of domestic violence, you don't have to hit somebody before you make someone go through a domestic violence act. Words, actions, they go a long way. It can be very, very hurtful. And words are things that you can't take back. So it lingers in the mind of the man. And he will keep pondering over it and to be hurting him. And once he thinks and remembers it, he's like, he wish he never got married to that woman. So men say it even up till date because what the actions that they are getting, the reciprocations from their wife is really not a good one at all. Please, women, learn to embrace your husband for whom he is. Some women, because their husbands don't have money, oh, he is nothing to them. And that's when you see some of them decide to start having an affair outside. Just like Mr. Christopher, he said, his wife now resulted into cheating on him. Some women go to that extent and feel that their husband doesn't provide enough for them. So they will now get involved with another relationship outside marriage so that they can get their satisfaction or get whatever they really need. But that shouldn't be the case at all. You should be with your husband through thick and thin because you don't know how tomorrow turns out to be. It's terrible living in the midst of someone who is always nagging. You can't even have rest of mind because you can't even sleep. If you're trying to sleep, the woman is nagging. So when you women say your husbands are leaving the house, sit down and ask yourself a question. Why should he be leaving the house? Some women are the ones driving their husbands outside and making their husband to find comfort in the arms of another woman. And some women know that they are nagging, they nag a lot, they talk a lot, they are very insultive, but they still don't want to change. They are still there and trying to compel the man to go by their rules. And that shouldn't be how a marriage should work. If you're one of these women out there, please have a rethink. Pause and ask yourself a question. Are you doing the right thing as a wife and as a mother? How well are you treating your own husband? Do you push your husband outside? Do you treat your husband in such a way that he regrets marrying you? These are questions you should always ask yourself. If your husband don't come home early every day, ask yourself a question. Is there something that is chasing him out there? Please, you better think and ask yourself these questions and try to have a change of heart before you lose your husband. Some women, their eyes are just still out there. But once the man leaves them, that's when they come to their senses and realize that they have just lost their husbands as a result of their ill-mannered attitude. Women, please watch yourself and ask yourself a series of questions. How are you living with your husband? How do you regard your husband? How do you treat him? Also for the men, like Mr. Christopher, he was always telling his wife to pack out of the house, to pack out of the house. You should not just send your wife away from the house. You should not let her feel like she is worthless. Irrespective of what your wife is doing, if your wife is into acts like this, if she's cheating on you, and every other negative things that you're getting from her. This is where you involve family members. You call their attention to their daughter's attitude. You, you go and meet 
a therapist, seek counseling, meet your religious leaders, go to church, meet your church leaders. However it is, just seek for help. Don't throw your wife out of the house. That is being inhuman. Have you thought of the fact that probably she wouldn't have any place to go? That's a wrong move. Instead of chasing her away from the house, look for a way to mend your home. You are the man you are in charge. You shouldn't follow women with the way they talk and act. Try not to resolve issues with violence as well. Because you're chasing your wife away. What do you call that? That's also part of the act of violence. Because you're chasing her out of the house where you're expecting her to go and stay. This is how you push your wives to other men out there. And some of these men, these women that they treat like this could even be very nice. But just because they are not contempted, they now throw her away from the house. But with what Christopher was actually saying, they were always involved in the fight. They had little or no peaceful moments together. Always watch and know the kind of person you want to get married to. Even though some people will not unleash their true selves until you get married to them. But at the same time, be watchful. Be very, very observant. So you don't fall victim of issues like this. Men, treat your wife with regards, with love. Even when she is acting up like this. Because that is the only way you will bring her close to you. I know some women could be so hardened and they don't even care how you feel. But then, don't take the laws into your home. Seek for a way to mend your marriage. And that will go a long way. Especially when you have kids involved, please parents always consider the welfare and the well-being of your children while you are into acts of domestic violence because whatever you're doing your kids are also learning from you but guys what do you all think about this analyzing the fact that he now killed his wife but he's claiming that that wasn't his intention he only wanted to teach her a lesson for the first time let him see how he can overpower his wife and the only way to him he felt was to pick up that pistol and hit her where she finally died do you think he had the right approach? Because taking someone else's life, should there be justification for that in an act like this? Because this is horrible and it's not even acceptable at all. Even by the law, it's not acceptable. He said he killed her in self-defense. So who were his weaknesses when he did that? Because if it's out of self-defense, he need a lot of proof to prove that. He didn't intentionally kill her. Please, both partners, understand yourselves very well. That's why it's good to be watchful and observant before you commit yourself into any serious relationship that leads to marriage. Because some people are just naturally violent. And once you get into their hands, just know that you'll be the next punching bag in that particular house. Please, it goes to both couple. Women, please stop being abusive. Stop being a nagging wife. Try, when you see your husband sleeping away, try to find out what the problem is and pull him back again. And don't be a party to destroying your own home. Also, for the men, you are in charge. If you have a wife that doesn't listen to you, always nagging, being insultive, giving you all acts of domestic violence, Please don't take the laws into your hands by fighting with her. Raising your hands on her, it's even wrong. Seek for help. Go and meet your family members or meet your church leaders or your various religious leaders. Meet them or you call the helpline. There are a lot of sources for you to get the help that you deserve. It's only when you do all of that, you will end up having to put your home together in peace again. Please, people should not take the laws into their hands. Look at now, he already realized that what he did was wrong. That's why he's trying to take Sniper. But unfortunately for him, it didn't work. His neighbors had intervened. Don't take the life of your wife away from her or because you want to avenge whatever she's been doing to you or you're trying to ensure that she goes through the same pain.
No, there is no point to do all of that. Just seek for a way to mend your home. At the end of the day, you just face a long time in jail. And that's what's going to happen to Christopher right now because he's not justified for this action, irrespective of all the allegations he has levied against his wife. Well, at the moment, he is in police custody. He was just arrested today. May the soul of his wife rest in perfect peace with the Lord. And may God console his entire family, friends, well wishes, every other person. May God console them all. It is a very, very big tragedy. And I'm sure even the wife did not know or believe that the husband will be the one to take her own life and learn to control your anger. Christopher said it was out of anger that he took up a pistol and hit her. Learn to control your anger. Don't allow your anger to control you. And also women love, respect your husband and listen to them. Men, please pay more attention to your wives. If things are going wrong, try to resolve it amongst yourself. And if it's not working, please look for a way out by communicating. Either you call a therapist, you seek counseling or you go to your church leaders or your various religious leaders and make your voice heard so that something can be done and so you don't end up taking this drastic decision and you can see that he was about taking his own life because he realized what he did was wrong because he never planned to kill his wife but fortunately for him he didn't die his neighbors were able to revive him back Friends, whatever you think, you can put that down at the comment section. Then please don't forget to hit on the like button. Also, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you get notified each time we upload a new video. Friends, I'm here today to talk about how to start up a new YouTube channel. So for those that are looking to start up a new YouTube channel, Probably you've been trying to figure out how to go about it or you have been trying to see what it entails or what you need to start. That's why I'm here today to give you the easy way for you to get this done. Not just the easy but the best method and also to give you or to talk about the best teacher who will give you all that it's required for you to start up your own youtube channel this is a teacher he is really successful with his youtube and he has been a teacher for so long now teacher is matt pa he's going to give you a step-by-step -step method on how to start up your own YouTube channel. No stone unturned. Every step of the way, he's going to lead you through it. You have links that you can actually reach out to him and communicate with him directly. That's Matt Pather. You can see the huge successes he has made in YouTube. You can see his silver, you can see the gold. You can also see his revenue that he's actually making on YouTube, which is very huge. He is going to give you a YouTube step-by-step -step tube mastery class. Every step of the way from the beginning of the opening of the channel to how you can start up and put up your videos. He is leaving no stone unturned, like I said. So for those that are seeking for how to start up their own YouTube channel, this is the easiest and the fastest way for you to have access to this particular teacher who is honest and straightforward and you will enjoy every bit of the class and you will have lots of gain. At the end of your class, you will have lots to hold on to and to start up your own YouTube channel. It's going to be like an ABC class. 
starting from the scratch. So please, for those of you that are interested in starting up your own YouTube channel, Matt Pa, he is the teacher and you will have direct access to him. I'm dropping the link below. So please, you just click on that link and you will have access to Matt Pa's class. He is going to give you the whole content of YouTube and all that it takes for you to be successful in YouTube and how to start YouTube from the scratch. Like I said, and I'm going to repeat, he's leaving no stone unturned. And it's so interesting that if you have any kind of complaint, no matter the time you have this complaint or you are confused about anything, you can communicate directly to him and he will give you a response as soon as he gets your question or as soon as he gets your mail or anything you're trying to confirm from him. He is quick at responding and he will give you the right answers. And even if you go elsewhere to search, you'll find out that what he is saying is actually true. He wouldn't mislead you. So please, for those of you that want to start your own YouTube channel from the scratch and see how you can be successful on YouTube, please go to this link, click on the link below. So you will have access to the teacher. That's the teacher there you can see and see his success. You can go through that and then you click on the link so that you can have direct access to Matt Pa himself. This teacher, you will enjoy and enjoy every bit of the classes that he's going to give to you. So friends, do not forget to click the link below so you have access to Matt Pa's to mastery class. And he will give you the best teaching for YouTube you will really need to start your own channel. Friends, thank you for coming up today. Please, for those that have not subscribed, click on the subscribe button and the notification bell so you get notified each time we upload a new video. Thank you once again and God bless you all.